Interesting the modifications I've made so far to the Saint Smart Pro for XL and stick around because that's what we're doing in this episode. Hey everyone and welcome to another episode of James Dean Designs. If you're new to the channel and love CNC, make sure you hit that subscribe button in the corner to get all the latest videos. Now today's video is a fairly short one. We're just running through some of the modifications I've made recently to the Prover XL 6060, or what was the original 4030. Now I should say there is a thunderstorm going on outside, so if you hear any bangs or grumbles, it's the weather, it's not me. Now the modifications that I've made so far, some are simple, some are a little bit more complex, but anything that I reference or use in the video today, you can find in the description area below, such as 3D files for printing, any particular tools or files that you may need. Do check the description area out, it's where I put all the latest information that you'll need for the video. Now let's move on to the first modification, which is the biggest one that I've made so far. Now when you receive your extension kit, the bed size goes up to 6 640 by 840. Obviously it's quite an expansion. If you remember my original video, we used a piece of MDF to do the bed. I did later add some supports to that to minimize the amount of flex, but I wanted something a bit more rigid. So what I did was upgrade to an aluminium bed. A Couple of reasons for this. One, I just mentioned the minim to minimize the amount of flex in it. Also I wanted something that made it very easy for clamping things there. And obviously all the different channels that you've got in it, just makes it really easy to do different layers, move things about, that type of thing. So let's take a look at how we built that aluminium bed and installed it onto the machine. So this is the start of the new bed for the 6060. What we essentially have is eight pieces of 2080 aluminium extrusion cut down to 840 millimeters in length, which is the same length as the existing MDF bed that is currently on. And what we're simply going to do is stack these all up together make sure they're all aligned and then pinch them together and hold them in place with some brackets. Now just to explain, eight, uh, 2080 aluminium extrusion, you're already familiar with this, it is essentially the same as the front and back on the 4030 or the 6060 extension kit and basically what that means is 20 millimeters by 80 millimeters, and that gives you the profile for the aluminium. Now the way we're holding this all together as I say is with some brackets. Now the brackets have 8mm M5 bolts through with some M5 T nuts. Now ideally for maximum um, strength we probably should have had one continuous piece holding this all together. However I was struggling to find one that had all the, align all the holes that aligned up perfectly with the slots in the extrusion. Also if you remember previously when I fitted the MDF board I put two supports down the middle to support the MDF and I'm going to leave those in place even though we're switching over to this extrusion. So I've had to leave slots for those supports as well. So basically we're going to clamp it together with multiple brackets and I'll put some more in the middle and some more on the end to hold it all in place and just to buy, apply a bit of pressure with the parallel clamps to make sure everything is as tight as it can be and therefore gives it maximum strength. Once that's all finished, we're gonna take the existing MDF bed, lay it over the top of it, and that will give us the exact locations that we need to drill the holes through the aluminium in order to guarantee that it fits the frame. So everything is in place, all the plates have been tightened down, so everything should stay in place once I release the clamps. I've offset this one in the middle because there was a middle support as well between those two runners down the middle, so I've just made sure that will clear it. Now the next step is to take the MDF board off the 6060 machine, place it on top of this so we can drill through and make sure we get the eight holes in the exact position. So you can probably just see in the background, I've now taken the MDF bed off and placed it on top of the aluminium extrusion one. I've clamped it in place as best as I can. What I'm gonna do is pile it through the holes that are already in place to mark the top of the aluminium. Then I'll probably take the MDF off and continue to drill all the way through and finish it off. So some of the holes fell in awkward places, such as right on the edges of the slot, and it would have made it very difficult to drill without some sort of aid. So we used a few different tools to get this done. I've used the Molescraft pillar drill, which just allows you to keep the drill vertical and minimizes the amount of runoff. I use a Dremel where necessary to start the hole off and just give a bit of guidance, as I say, again, to stop it from running off the edge. And we've also used a step drill because the bolts themselves have not only got to go through, but they've got to be countersunk as well. So it just allows us to get that done. The next step is to get this back over onto the machine. And with a bit of luck, all the holes should line up perfectly.
It sat really well, one bolt was out of alignment, but that finishes installing the bed. Now the next modification I've previously touched on in another video, which is bringing the Y-axis motors from the back to the front. So I'll quickly talk through how I did that now. I should say, obviously, I've already done this, so it is a retrospective video, but some people wanted to know how I did it, and I can explain how easy it is. So a few weeks ago, I gave an update about how I put the stepper motors on the front of the machine rather than the back because it was a benefit to me. I also said that I didn't do a video because of how easy it was to do it. And it literally takes about 15 or 20 minutes to achieve it, but I will quickly talk through the steps. Now, because this machine is fairly symmetrical, it makes it very easy to swap parts from side to side or from front to back. Now we start with the gantry end plates. There are four bolts on either side holding this in place. Release those out. Also disconnect the drag chain from the bracket here. And that will allow the gantry then to be able to lift up, turn around and just place it at the side. The next step that we need to do is release all four corners. Now there are four bolts on each, cor on each corner that we need to focus on. Two on the lower side here and then two on the front here. And this will essentially allow the front and back plates to release from these corner plates which are attached to the Y axis. Once you've done this, you can spin the axis around. Obviously you will need to disconnect the limit switch bracket as well and transfer that over to the opposite side when you spin them around. And you'd also have to flip the drag chain around, as I say, from front to back because the curve will essentially go the opposite way now. But once you've done that and then reassembled all four corners, that's the majority of the hard work done. Obviously, as you reassemble, make sure you keep everything square and perpendicular on the sides, as you would do when you were setting up the machine. And then once that's all done, you drop the X-axis gantry back on top, put the four bolts in on back on either side, and that is essentially everything. There is one setting that you will need to change, Obviously, because we've swapped the motors from the front to the back, they essentially run in the opposite direction. So forward would go backwards, backwards would go forwards. To resolve this, we just simply change the $3 setting to number two, and that reverses the motors and allows it to travel back in the correct direction. So forward will then become forward and backwards will then become backwards. So to complete this final step, make sure your machine is connected via candle or UGS. Come down to the command line and we're simply going to type dollar three equals two and hit enter and it's entered that command now to double check we will type dollar dollar hit enter it loads our grbl settings up we'll scroll back up and we can then see dollar three equals two so the next two modifications are quite simple and they're all about protection and dust so let's take a closer look and i can show you exactly what i've done to try and minimize the amount of dust getting it into the mechanisms of the machine now nearly everyone I've seen with a 4030 realised that the dust guards that were in place were not quite high enough to stop dust from getting into the C-beam. Now the problem is when you upgrade to the 6060 you don't get any dust, beam, um, dust guards to go back in place. So we have to be aware that this C-beam is quite exposed. So what I've done is basically got some clear acrylic or perspex and I've just printed some little feet for it to sit in. Now the reason I've done this and left it so it can be moved about is because I still like to be able to get access to the C-beam for general maintenance, to be able to apply lubricant, clean it all out. Now obviously you can put something more permanent in place that completely covers this, but the reason I didn't, as I say, is because I like the idea to be able to move it out the way, gain access, and it just makes life easier and then I can put it back in when I need to. Now I may do another version of this and put a slight arc on top to give it some over top protection but for now this is doing the job. The other thing you can also see if I just move this back is I've done some guards over the carriages themselves. Now these are just 3D printed if I pop one off I can quickly show you now it just protects the rollers and sits on top a bit like a cap. Now there are a couple of benefits to this one it stops the risk of the cables wearing on the wheels, particularly not on the y-axis but more on the x-axis where they run quite close to the wheels. It also minimises any dust getting on top of those wheels and these act like a bit of a cleaner when it goes back and forth over the C-beam. So it's dual purpose but the main reason for both this and the clear perspex is to minimise the impact that the dust has on the running of the actual machine itself. So as I said at the start, it is just a quick update on the modifications I've made so far. I will continue to improve it, but if there's things you've done to your machine that I've not done yet, do let me know in the comments section below. The next big modification I'm planning to do 
is installing the Dewalt router. So just as a preview for what is going to come up. I can't wait to get that installed and see what it's capable of. That is the everything for this episode. Thank you all for watching. A big thank you to my Patreon supporters as always. If you want to get involved, check out the link in the description area below. I'll see you all on the next episode.